Hello and welcome to today's lecture on MOS dynamic circuits. This is the first lecture on this topic and in two lectures I shall consider different aspects of dynamic circuits rather the MOS dynamic circuits. And here is the agenda of today's lecture. After a brief introduction about what you have discussed in my earlier lectures, I shall discuss about single phase NMOS dynamic circuits. Although these are not in uh, wide use, but for the sake of completeness, we have to discuss it. Then we shall see, uh, discuss about two phase MOS, NMOS dynamic circuits and also we shall discuss about two phase clock generation technique followed by two phase CMOS dynamic circuits. Then finally, I shall conclude our lecture by discussing the advantages and limitation of dynamic circuits. Coming to the introduction, uh, we have seen that pseudo NMOS static circuits have two disadvantages. So, they draw static current as long as power remains on and because of ratioed logic, low level output is not strong. On the other hand, there is no static power dissipation in CMOS circuits, but logic function is implemented twice. Let me consider uh, a very simple function, say uh, you have to realize y is equal to x1 plus x2 x3. So, using static CMOS, what will you do? You will realize this function, uh, you have to take uh, complement of this, that means uh, this will be the complement of this is x bar dot x2 bar x3 bar or so, this is your y bar. So, the network will correspond to this, this x bar, x 1 bar dot x 2 bar plus x 3 bar. So, the, uh, <coughs> the, the circuit will be like this. So, you will have x 1, x 1 dash and then x 2 dash x 3 dash and these are connected to ground and the, uh, the, the PMOS network will be dual of that. That means, here you will have uh, these are parallel. So, they will be in series. So, x 1 dash and x 2 dash x 3 this and you will take the output from here. But if you realize the, this is the static CMOS and if you realize by using pseudo NMOS, then you do not require so many PMOS transistors, you require only one PMOS transistor and then the, uh, the uh, PMOS, NMOS network part is identical x 1 dash and you will have x 2 dash x 3 dash. So, we let us compare the advantages and disadvantages which we have discussed in detail in the last two lectures. So, static CMOS circuits as you can see same functionality is implemented twice in the PMOS network and the NMOS network. So, it requires large area and here you can say smaller area and because of large area and next stage will drive both to a PMOS transistor and a NMOS transistor because of that the capacitance is large. So, uh, delay is long, longer delay, long delay primarily because, primar primarily because of larger area and you have to drive two transistors simultaneously. And also, however, the main advantage of this is 
the power dissipation is stat there is no static power dissipation. So, no static power dissipation. On the other hand is in case of pseudo small uh, NMOS circuit, it uh, occupies smaller area, smaller small delay, smaller delay, but there is static power dissipation, static power dissipation is there. And uh, it has been found that the pseudo NMOS circuits can be 5 times faster than that of uh, uh, static CMOS circuits. So, uh, as I mentioned in my last lecture, we have to combine the advantages of uh, both pseudo NMOS and st uh, static CMOS. And we have seen because of extra area and extra number of transistors, the load capacitance of on gates of uh, static CMOS circuits is considerably higher. So, speeds of operation of static CMOS and pseudo NMOS circuits. Uh, are not really comparable as I mentioned uh, that pseudo and MOS circuits are faster because the of course, the, st uh, the, uh, the static CMOS has twice the available current drive, but static CMOS has got uh, twice the ca capacitance of NMOS. So, although current drive is larger and, uh, but because of larger capacitance delay is longer. So, Whenever you have choice between pseudo NMOS and static CMOS, on what basis you will select one from the other? If low power is of importance, then you will go for uh, your uh, static CMOS. On the other hand, higher speed is of requirement, then you will go for pseudo NMOS. Now, what we are interested in, we would like to combine the advantages of both of them and that is why as I mentioned in my last lecture, we shall be going for uh, dynamic CMOS. That means, the advantage of low power of static CMOS circuits and smaller cheap area of NMOS circuits or pseudo NMOS circuits, they are same, are combined in dynamic circuits leading to circuits of smaller area, lower and lower power dissipation. That means, you are achieving both. And also as I mentioned, most dynamic circuits are also faster in speed. And in the static combination circuits, the capacitance is regarded as, as a parameter responsible for poor performance of the circuit and therefore, considered as an undesirable circuit element. We have seen that while discussing static CMOS circuit, that delay is large because of larger capacitance. So, the capacitance larger capacitances or presence of capacitances is considered to be a menace. Because of capacitance there is delay and delay is longer if the capacitance is larger. Now, the question arises can the capacitance I am talking about the parasitic capacitances that is present in the circuit can be used fruitfully, can be used, can it be used for uh, good cause. So far, it is associated with, with the delay of a circuit, but is there any way by which the capacitances can be utilized to achieve functionality of a circuit which is superior in performance. In fact, that is where the dynamic CMOS comes in. In dynamic CMOS, the capacitor which is present uh, within the uh, MOS circuits. We have seen that the that gate to uh, substrate or gate to channel capacitance, that capacitance is of very good quality because of good quality silicon dioxide layer that is created, thin oxide layer that is created and that capacitance we shall exploit or utilize. How? We know that a capacitor can be used to store charge. So, since a capacitor can be used to store charge, can we develop circuit where the capacitor intrinsic capacitors will be used to store charge and that will be used for uh, implementing uh, circuit operation. And in fact, we shall see that 
dynamic circuits explicitly exactly does that. Dynamic MOS circuits are realized by using parasitic capacitors to store information. This is also done uh, in, you know, in a memory elements. As you know, uh, dynamic uh, RAM that is used in almost all systems, they are also these capacitors are utilized to store information. But here we are talking about uh, realizing combinational circuit by storing information in those uh, parasitic capacitors. Uh, question naturally arises, are they free from any disadvantages? Obviously, in this world nothing is one sided, we shall, as we shall see, it will the dynamic CMOS circuits have uh, many advantages, there will be many limitations as well. So, our objective will be to design circuits which will overcome the limitations and utilize the uh, good features. So, let us proceed to discuss about dynamic circuits. To start with, we shall discuss about single phase dynamic circuits. Although single phase dynamic circuits uh, are, not very, are not very common, but for the sake of completeness and for pedagogical purposes, I shall uh, start our discussion. Uh, we shall start our discussion about single phase dynamic circuits. One very important point to be noticed at the outset that a dynamic circuit will require some clock. So far we have seen that uh, either NMOS or pseudo NMOS or static CMOS circuits uh, do not require any clock for their operation. So, the clock was not present particularly when we are realizing combinational circuit, but as we shall see dynamic circuits will always require some clock. So, even in case of your single phase, single phase dynamic MOS circuit, he will require some clock. What do we really mean by a clock or how do you characterize a clock? you will be en encountering clock in any digital circuits. How do you characterize it? Uh, you will see that clock is essentially a train of pulses like this. One important feature is the or parameter is the time period T. So, time period is one parameter time period T or uh, it, uh, there is another parameter associated with time period that is your frequency, frequency is equal to 1 by T. So, a clock is uh, characterized by, by its clock frequency. Now, in addition to that within each cycle, so this time period is considered a single cycle and this is repeated, uh, uh, repeated continuously. So, uh, if you look at one particular time period, you, you see that there are two uh, states associated with it. One is your high and another is low. So, that means there are two states. What are the two states? High and low. So, these are the two important states which are used to activate circuits and whenever it is associated with these voltage levels, high voltage level and, and low voltage level, we call it level sensitive. That means, the circuit is level sensitive. Whenever it is, a change occurs whenever the circuit has high level or low level, depending on that the operation changes. Another uh, uh, characteristic parameter is also there, you know there is you can see each period has got two transitions, mm -hmm. low to high and high to low and these are called age sensitive. There are circuits which are sensitive to age, that means here low to 
high and high to low. So, there are two edges in each period. So, the events can occur uh, or can be initiated either by changing level or by changing edges. So far as the MOS dynamic circuits are concerned, as we shall see, uh, these are level sensitive. That means, based on level, the operation of the circuit uh, changes. Let us draw a very simple uh, single phase dynamic MOS inverter. How do you realize an inverter? Actually, you realize to, you require two transistors connected in this form, and here you apply a clock, say this clock in simple form, we usually write is CLK clock. Clock is applied, and here we apply VDD. Then we have the traditional pull down transistor present here. This is your uh, pull down transistor and we apply an input here and we take the output not from here, but from this point. So, here is the output point. So, V out and of course, it will have some associated capacitance as you know, because it is feeding to a next stage and which may be a, an, a NMOS transistor. So, uh, it is it is going to the next stage. How it works? Uh, based on the single phase clock, you have applied a clock here and you have applied input here and you are taking the output from here. How it works? When this clock is high, this, these transistors Q1 and Q2 both are on. So, when the clock is high, both the transistors are on and as a consequence, uh, what will happen? What will, will you get at the output? Whenever uh, clock is high and input, let us assume there are two conditions, your V in is equal to 0 volt. Whenever V in is equal to 0, this transistor is off. As a consequence, what will happen? This capacitor, this load capacitor C L will charge to V D D through these two transistors and you have applied a clock here. So, um, these two transistors will remain on. Of course, here you will get a voltage which is equal to V D D minus V T, not V D D because you know the transistor will go off as the uh, voltage goes above uh, V D D minus V T. V T is the threshold voltage of the NMOS transistor. So, you are getting a high level voltage which is V D D minus V T. Now, what about uh, the case? Uh, now, if you if whenever the clock is going down, that means whenever it is in the low uh, level, then what happens? Then what happens? The voltage which is the capacitor which is charged to V D minus V T that remains there, that remains that is available here, which will feed to the next stage. That means next stage we utilize this logic level. That means it is assumed that output is now V D D minus V T. That means uh, V out is equal to V D D minus V T, which is considered to be high because input is low. Now let us consider the situation when V in is equal to say 5 volt or uh, V D D. Then what will happen? Whenever it is V D D, then you can see these transistors are on, this transistor is also not on. What will be the voltage here? Voltage will be dependent on the ratio of the uh, W by L of this transistor and W by L of this transistor. So, the behavior is identical to that of uh, you know uh, static uh, uh, NMOS circuits. So, we get a V out which is equal to V low. Of course, this is not 0 which will be uh, dependent on the ratio of the uh, L by W ratio of these transistor and that is why we can say that this is a uh, this is a uh, this is ratioed logic. Now, what is the gain that we have achieved in this case? Gain is that what you can do you can make this period that means high level very small I mean this period can be small this this I mean 
high level small and lo low level longer. By that what will what will you achieve? You will achieve that power dissipation will occur that means this power dissipation can occur only when uh, this clock is high. Earlier irrespective of the presence of clock out as, uh, as long as output was low there was power dissipation in static CMOS, uh, static NMOS circuits, but in this particular case only when the output is high, I mean clock is high and the output is low then there is static power dissipation. So, the static power dissipation is reduced to a great extent, but there is static power dissipation and uh, it is ratioed logic, but uh, red power the static power dissipation is much lower compared to uh, your static NMOS circuits or uh, pseudo NMOS circuits. However, you do not get good quality high level and good quality low level, both the levels are uh, you know are weak not strong high or strong low. So, uh, these circuits are not very popular because of these limitations and uh, although um, for the sake of completeness we are discussing it. And in fact, not only inverter you can realize NAND gate as you can see only requirement is that you will require additional transistors in the PMOS NMOS network, pull down network. So, uh, two input NAND gate will require two transistors, uh, two input NOR gate will require two transistors. In this way the number of transistors that is required. is equal to n plus 2. So, n number of transistors for the n inputs and two transistors are required uh, these two transistors q 1 and q 2. So, these two additional transistors are required apart from n transistors where in the primary inputs are applied. So, you see the number of transistors is reduced. So, uh, these circuits will be faster than uh, static CMOS. However, we have discussed various limitations of this. <coughs> As I mentioned circuits realized using a single phase clock scheme, clocking scheme has the disadvantage that the output voltage level is dependent on the inverter ratio and the number of transistors in the current part to ground. Moreover the circuit dissipates power when the output is low and the clock is high as I mentioned and uh, as current flows only when the clock is high the power consumption is reduced and it depends on the duty cycle ratio of the high, high time to the time period as I mentioned here. So, this is the time period T and this is let us assume this is the uh, this is T 1. So, power dissipation will be dependent on the ratio of T 1 by T and if T, T 1 is small compared to T 1 by T then power dissipation will be smaller. Another problem arising out of single phase clock uh, logic is known as clock skew problem. Uh, for the time being we are not discussing clock skew problem, later on we shall discuss about it in more detail uh, and let us now switch to two phase dynamic uh, circuits. Now before we discuss about two phase dynamic circuits, two phase. What do you really mean by two phase? Before we come to the dynamic circuits, let us discuss about what do we really mean by two phase. In two phase, you will find that there are two clocks, not one. So, that means you will be having a clock phi 1, another clock phi 2. So, and they will have some this kind of relationship phi 1, this is phi 1, and phi 2 will be like this. They are called non-overlapping. By non-overlapping we mean they are never simultaneously on. That means, uh, phi 1 bar phi 2 is always 0 as you can see. That means, when phi 1 is 1, phi 2 is 0 and when phi 2 is 1, phi 1 is 0. So, what are the uh, different states it can have. Of course, it will have the time period and frequency like single phase, but in addition to that what are the uh, other features of a two phase dynamic uh, two phase clock. Number one it has got three states. In, 
Now, normally whenever you have got two clocks, you are supposed to get four states 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 and 0, 1. But here you can see you cannot really have uh, the state when both of them are 1. That means here you will have 1 and 0, that means phi 1 is 1, phi 2 is 0. You can have phi 2 1, uh, sorry, phi 2 0, phi 1, uh, phi, phi, phi 1 0, phi 2 1. You can have both of them 0 as well for the this during this deep read, both of them 0, but in this case you will not never get 1 1. That means uh, this is not allowed in dynamic uh, in two phase clock, and that is the reason why it is called two phase clock. So, two phase clock is associated with three states, it is characterized by three states and, um, in, in, and uh, this can be used to realize two phase dynamic circuits. Question naturally arises, how do you realize two phase clock? Because how do you ensure that uh, both of them will never be 1 1? So, you will require some circuit, special type of circuit which can be used to realize a dynamic sima to, uh, to realize two phase clock. Let me draw a very simple diagram which can be used to realize two phase clock. You will require two NAND gates and several, uh, several inverters. and this is connected to this point and this is connected to this point. So, here if you apply clock, here you will get phi 1 and here you will get phi 2. Let me briefly explain the operation of this circuit. Let us assume this is the clock. this is the clock and with respect to with the help of this clock we have generated phi 1 and phi 2 which are non overlapping in nature and how they are becoming non overlapping and what will be the gap between this time and this time that means when it is going low it is going high or whenever it is going uh, high and this one is going low these durations, these durations are important. So, they should be separated by some gap called band gap and uh, let us see how it really happens. Let us as uh, initially let us say here we have assumed that the clock is 0. So, whenever this is 0, what will be the output here? For a NAND gate as you know irrespective of the number of inputs, if any one of the input is 0 output will be 1. So, since this is 0 this will be 1 this will be 0, this will be 1 and this will be 0. That means, we are getting that the phi 1 is also 0. When clock is 0, phi 1 is also 0. What about phi 2? Uh, here, this since this is 0, this is 1 and here also it is 1. So, 1 1 makes it 0, this is 1, this is 0 and this is 1. So, as expected, the the uh, the phi 2 is high. So, here it is low and here it is high. Now, uh, at this point it has switched from uh, low to high. So, as it switches from low to high that is 1, what happens? Whenever it switches to 0 to 1, this will switch to 1 to 0 after 1 gate delay. And as you know, for a non gate, for a NAND gate, whenever any one of the input is 0, output will immediately change. So, this will change to 0 to 1, this will change to 1 to 0, this will change to uh, 0 to 1, this will change to 1 to 0. After how much time? Say, how many got gate delays? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. After 5 gate delays, phi 2 is become, how phi 2 is going? Phi 2 is becoming. Uh, low. So, 
let us assume this is the uh, 5 gate delay, after 5 gate delay this will go low. Then uh, as you can see here, this is now 1 and this is also 1, these two will make it 0, this will make it 1, uh, this will make it 0 and this will make it 1. So, this will switch to 1, but how after how much time? After this has become say uh, this has become 1 and this is already 1. So, uh, when both of them becomes 1 after that 1, 2, 3, 4 that means here it will be uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. After 8 gate delays this will switch from uh, 1 to 0. Earlier it was 1, now it will become uh, it has become 0. So, it will become uh, 8 gate delay. So, this is 5. 5 delta and here will be another 3 delta when it will go from uh, low to high. And this will continue until another change occurs here. So, whenever again it swi switches from 1 to 0, I mean 1 to 0, it is switching now to 0. And as it switches to 0, this will now change from 0 to 1, uh, since this is 0, it will become 1 again, this will become 0, this will become 1, this will become 0. But after how much time? So, you can see uh, as it is changing from, this input is changing from 1 to 0 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, after 4 gate delays it will become 0. That means, 5, 1 will become 0 from this edge after 4 gate delays. And as it has happened, this becomes 1, this is also 1. Again, after 3 gate delays of the, from that, it will become uh, switch, it will switch to 1. That means, this will switch to 1 after 3 gate delays, from this 3 gate delays. And this will continue. So, you can see here we have got 5 gate delay here, 3 gate delay here, 4 gate delay here and uh, this to this it is sorry not this one, uh, yeah this to this 4 gate delay and from this edge to actually it should be here 3 delta. So, we find that in this particular case here there is a gap of 3, uh, three gate delay, here also there is a uh, gap of 3 gate delay here. Similarly, for the other case also there will be 3 gate delay. That means, uh, this part, th this one, the gap between these two edges will be 3 delta, <coughs> gap between these two edges will be 3 delta, gap between these two edges will be 3 delta, gap between these two edges will be 3 delta. So, this is how uh, you can realize a two phase clock. Uh, with the help of few inverters to NAND gates from a single phase clock. You may say, say you may ask that suppose we are not satisfied with a 3 delta band gap between the two phase clock. Then what you can do? You can insert more number of inverters here. So, instead of 3 stage, you can have 5 stage here. Then this will become, this gap will be 5 delta, 5 delta, 5 delta and so on. So, depending on your requirement, you can increase the gap between the two phase clocks, but that non overlapping property will be always maintained uh, whenever you regenerate two phase clock by using this technique. Okay. Uh, so, much about two phase clock. So, here we have uh, shown the same thing and how continuously you will get two phase clock phi 1 and phi 2. Uh, maintaining 3 gate delays at both edges, here also 3 gate delay, 3 gate delay and so on. Now, let us see how we can use uh, this two phase clock to realize a uh, two phase dynamic circuit. <coughs> let us consider a two phase dynamic NMOS inverter. So, this will require 3 transistors, that means here you will apply phi 2, 
here you will apply phi 1, this is connected to ground, this is connected to V D D and V into input is applied here and you will be taking output from here V out. And as usual to explain the operation of the circuit, we shall assume that there is a uh, load capacitance associated with it. Now, let us try to uh, explain the operation of the circuit. The operation of the circuit can be explained with the help of what is known as precharge logic. Precharge logic. So, when phi 2 is 1, the output and obviously that time phi 1 is phi 1 phi phi 1 is 0 when phi 2 is 1 phi 1 is 0 that we have meant that we have ensured both of them can never be simultaneously 1 so when this is the case what happens this out this transistor is on so this will charge to uh, the output will charge to vdd minus vt high level output will charge to high level so, this is called precharge phase. So, during the precharge phase when phi is phi 2 is 1 that means when phi 2 is 1 the output is charging to high level this is high. Now, whenever it switches to phi 2 to 0 and phi 1 is equal to 1, in this condition this transistor is off and this transistor is on. When this is this is so, what will happen to this capacitor? This the if V in depending on V there now you can have two, two conditions, this is this is known as evaluation phase, evaluation phase. In this evaluation phase, there are two possibilities. One possibility is that V in is equal to 0 and another possibility is V in is equal to V d d. Let us consider when V in is equal to 0. When V in is equal to 0, this transistor is off and although phi 2 is 1, this transistor is on, uh, there is no uh, path to discharge, discharge this capacitor. So, that means V out is equal to VDD, I mean v is high, V out is equal to high. Why it is high? Because the, ch the capacitor has is already charged to high level during the precharge phase and the evaluation phase follows the precharge phase and as a consequence the high level is maintained during evaluation phase and which will be used uh, by the next stage. So, after evaluation, after the evaluation is done, a valid output is available which will be used by the next stage. Now, let us assume V in is equal to V d d. When V in is equal to V d d, both the transistors are on and capacitor will discharge to zero logic level. So, that means in that case V out will be equal to zero or low logic level. So, here of course, you will get strong low logic level. So, what is the advantage of this circuit? we are able to get two possible outputs and of course, high logic level is not very good, but low log logic level is good because uh, it is not ratioed logic. Number one, uh, this two phase dynamic circuit is not ratioed logic. There is no static power dissipation. So, let us list the ad advantages and disadvantages. Okay. So, uh, maybe we can uh, discuss about the advant advantages and disadvantages very briefly before we come to other circuits. Advantage is uh, it is not ratioed logic. So, disadvantages associated with ratioed logic is overcome. No static power dissipation. Third is uh, faster, much faster than either pseudon MOS or 
uh, static CMOS. Uh, and number of transistors as we have seen is equal to n plus 2 number of transistors is equal to n plus 2. So, these are the advantages of this two phase uh, dynamics uh, NMOS circuit. So, we find that uh, it has got very good features and that is the reason why it is called powerless ratio less power less because there is no static power dissipation and ratio less because it is not ratioed logic and of course, it is faster in operation. So, this two phase dynamic NMOS inverter uh, is uh, has got very good features and it is widely used. However, we are more interested in uh, CMOS circuits. So, we can realize dynamic CMOS circuits by extending the idea of static CMOS and here as you can see how we can do that. Whenever we are using uh, uh, statics, uh, I mean by uh, I mean uh, dynamic circuits by using CMOS <coughs> instead of the NMOS transistor, let me redraw it again. Instead of using dynamic CMOS inverter. Let me draw inverter before we can draw the other circuits. So, in case of dynamic inverter what you will require? You will require a PMOS transistor as pull up, a pull down transistor, NMOS transistor or inverter where you will apply input voltage and a uh, NMOS transistor uh, in the uh, path to 0. So, and what you can do? You can apply a clock. You do not really require two phase clock whenever you are realizing uh, dynamic CMOS circuit. The reason for that is you can see the same if we apply the same signal to the PMOS and NMOS transistor when P this phi is 0, this transistor is on, and when phi is 1, this transistor is on. So, the, requ the uh, that uh, the requirement for that that phi 1 and phi 2 should not be simultaneously on is satisfied very easily. So, we do not really require two phase clock in realizing dynamic CMOS circuit. The operation is identical to the inverter that you have discussed two phase dynamic NMOS inverter. Here what happens when when phi 2 uh, when phi is equal to 0 it is in the precharge phase. this output charges to high logic level and when phi, in, phi is equal to 1, then it is called uh, evaluation phase the output uh, is evaluated depending on the input this uh, V i n. So, this is how you can realize a dynamic CMOS inverter and all the advantages that I mentioned in the context of uh, this uh, two phase dynamic NMOS inverter are applicable to uh, dynamic CMOS inverter. It is not ratioed logic, there is no static power dissipation, it is faster, number of transistors required is equal to n plus 2 and it is also powerless and ratioless. So, all the advantages are carried to this uh, dynamic CMOS inverter. You can realize uh, dynamic CMOS inverter, I mean extend this concept to realize more complex gates. Let us consider uh, a equi first of all static CMOS and we shall see real we shall consider the realization of dynamic CMOS circuits corresponding to that. Let us assume that it is little complex circuit. So, you have got say x 1, x 2, x 3 and then you have got x 1, x 2, x 3 connected to ground. So, this is your static CMOS circuits. We want a dynamic CMOS circuit 
which is uh, which performs the same function. What you can do, you will re, you, you may use. You can see, as I mentioned earlier, you are do, uh, repeating two function, two logic circuits to realize the function. We shall see. We can use only one of them to realize uh, a dynamic CMOS circuits. Let us see how you can realize uh, this function by using only the NMOS network circuit. So, what will you do? You can realize the dynamic CMOS circuits x1, x2, x3 and here you will put one NMOS transistor and here you will put one PMOS transistor and you will apply clock here. So, you can see you do not have to really duplicate the logic function here, you will require only the uh, NMOS network part which is present here to realize the dynamic CMOS circuit. Of course, you will require two additional transistors that is here you will require n plus 2 transistors instead of 2 n as you require in static CMOS. Now, uh, is it the only way to realize dynamic CMOS circuit? Actually, you can use either the NMOS network or the PMOS network. Here, the circuit that has been realized uh, is using the NMOS network. What you can do? You can use the same, uh, you can realize the same circuit by using the PMOS network. So, in that case, the, the topology will be like this. same network x 1 then x 2 x 3, but he will require again two transistors one at the bottom and another at the top. So, you will apply phi bar you will apply phi or you can apply phi bar actually. Now, where from we will take the output? Here you are taking the output from here. So, this was your V out, but whenever you use PMOS network in that case you have to take the output from the this point bottom that means, V out is from here. How the circuit operates? Here actually again it is based on precharge approach, but instead of precharging the output to high level as you do it here you are actually pre discharging the output to low level in this particular case. That means, whenever you are using the PMOS network, then the output is pre discharged during the uh, pre charge phase. That means, this transistor is on, you have applied phi bar. So, this transistor will be on when this is high or phi is equal to 0. So, when this is high, this transistor will be discharged during pre-charge phase that is being done. So, this is discharged to 0 and during evaluation what will happen uh, depending on the uh, input combinations, uh, input vector that means, dep depending on the values of x 1, x 2 and x 3, you can uh, uh, this output will be charged to high level. If, if the input combination is such, the output should be high in that case the, there will be a path through this uh, through this network during the evaluation phase when this transistor is on and the there will be path through this PMOS network. So, this will uh, in the during evaluation phase it will charge to uh, VDD level, but uh, if the, the if the output is 0 then it will remain in that pre discharge condition it will not charge to VDD level. So, you can see we have two possible alternatives whenever we realize circuits using uh, dynamic CMOS approach. Either you can use the NMOS network or you can use the PMOS network, but you do not have to duplicate that means, use this as well as that as you do in case of static CMOS. And um, you may be asking which one will be faster and of course, the uh, network I mean the topology using NMOS network will be faster with the same area because as you know the PMOS transistors will take uh, uh, 
uh, will take longer time because of higher resistance and lower mobility of the holes compared to electrons and as a consequence for the same area the this particular topology will be uh, requiring larger time uh, it will be slower than this one. However, uh, both are used later on we shall see both can be combined in realizing a special type of circuit NORA the later on we shall discuss about it. For the time being uh, let us uh, uh, restrict to this. Now very quickly let us have a look at uh, the disadvantages, advantages and disadvantages. As I have already mentioned the number of transistors required for a circuit with fan in n is n plus 2 in contrast to 2 n in case of static CMOS circuits. The load capacitance is more than 50 percent less than static CMOS and is closer to that of NMOS circuits as a consequence it is faster. So, the speed of operation is faster than that of static CMOS circuits about 4 to 5 times faster as we, ha we have found that. And there is no static power dissipation and another important point is there is no short circuit power dissipation. Why there is no short circuit power dissipation? Because at no point of time there is path from VDD to ground even when the input changes because it is controlled by a clock and as a consequence it is since it is controlled by a clock there will be no uh, path from VD to, to VD to ground at any point of time and as a consequence there is no short circuit power dissipation. And later on we shall see that it has got no glitching power dissipation. Why it has got no glitching power dissipation? As you know glitching power dissipation occurs because of you know changes at the output within the circuit because of the delay of the circuit. But here it is more or less synchronized by a clock and only one transition is possible. You know after it has been precharged only transition that can occur is from high to low, no other transition is possible. But in case of static CMOS circuits the uh, at a particular node can go through a number of uh, you know charging and discharging before attaining the final, final value and as a consequence the glitching power dissipation is not present in uh, dynamic CMOS circuits. Uh, and as a consequence the dynamic CMOS circuits have been found to be very suitable because of their higher speed of operation and lower area. In fact, one of the very important uh, processor DEC alpha chip you may have heard of it the DEC alpha processor was one of the fastest processor uh, I mean in introduced uh, uh, long back and there they have used about 30 percent of their circuits using dynamic CMOS. Essentially the critical parts of the circuits were implemented by using dynamic CMOS circuits so that they can achieve very high speed of operation. Anyway uh, those are the advantages and based on those advantages this is done but uh, there are several disadvantages. Number one is charge leakage problem, number two is charge sharing problem and third is clock skew problem. So, these are the three problems associated with dynamic CMOS circuits uh, and uh, in my next lecture I shall discuss about these disadvantages and also we shall discuss about how they can be overcome. Obviously, if we accept the disadvantages then we cannot realize a circuit. We have to develop technique by which these limitations and disadvantages can be overcome and which we shall discuss in my next lecture. Thank you.